All right, folks, C.H. Miles with you here again for Sketch Card Artists on DeviantArt. Um, I'm going to go over a few of the other basic tools uh, that you might need to start out uh, drawing sketch cards. Uh, in the first episode, I basically showed you how to take a Bristol card and cut your own uh, standard card. But I wanted to go ahead and show you what a wide card would look like in comparison. And you can cut these basically the same way, the only difference being that instead of the length being three and a half like this, it's four and three quarters. So you can see the, the difference there. Um, something new that I believe Top started doing these uh, for their Wide Vision Star Wars cards, and a few artists have uh, pretty much gone with this. Uh, most notably being uh, Otis Frampton, who in fact actually does a Ustream. I will go ahead and put a link to that in the uh, sidebar here on YouTube and the comment box on DeviantArt so you can check that out. Um, chat with Otis and uh, you know watch him draw. Uh, he's really helpful. If you've got questions, um, he's a pretty nice guy. So by all means check that out. Uh, an alternative to Bristol, if you just can't find it anywhere. I have seen Bristol at Walmart before, but not always. And if you've got one of the smaller, non-super Walmarts, then you might not be able to find it if you don't have an art store available. Uh, this is a cheaper alternative. This is uh, Cardstock by Georgia Pacific. It's uh, found where you look for printer paper. Um, you want to make sure you get the 110 weight. I think it's the heaviest paper that they have. And this is easily cut with the thing. Most of the drawings that I do, I cut from this, unless I do something, you know, large, and then I, I go with Bristol board. And I just use the Canson Bristol board. And, but, you know, if you're not able to get a hold of that, this is a, another alternative. Um, when you're working with sketch cards, you will probably notice that as you begin to color them, or ink them, depending on what you're using, uh, they soak through to the back. And to prevent that, there are a couple of things you can do. Either you can go and buy uh, a large drawing surface like this, which is effectively, it's a large clipboard made out of masonite. I bought this at Dick Blick. It's their larger of the two. Uh, bought this for, I believe I paid 10 bucks it's 26 inches by 26 inches square. It's got a handle in it. Uh, I bought this so that I could w do larger watercolors and have a surface to tape it to so I can move it around because I can't very well tape it to the kitchen table, which is where I normally draw. Um, you can, If you're just going to do sketch cards, you don't, of course, need a surface that big. You can just go to Walmart and get uh, just a normal clipboard. Purchased this uh, two days ago for about a buck. And as you notice, it's also got the, the rubberized grip. You want to be really careful um, using the clips on your cards because it will crease them. So uh, if you're going to use that, you know, there's a rubber grip. If you don't want to spend a buck, uh, I'm sure you've all got a sketch pad around or two. Uh, just take the cardboard backing off of them and use that. As you can see, they they kind of bleed through. Uh, see all these card edges I've got going on here. Uh, that's from uh, the coloring ink going through. And depending on the thickness of your paper, I mean even a normal water color marker will go through. Um, if you're working strictly in pencil, it's not something you have to worry about either. Um, if you're going to work with watercolor, uh, you can tape your stuff down on a piece of cardboard like that, just like I've done here. Um, and not, uh, you know, you can angle it and, and paint on it. Just something I was messing around with. Scotty Shoemaker started doing them that way, so I thought I'd give it a, a whirl. Um, next thing would be the pencil, or, you know, whatever kind of pencil you're comfortable with. You can get a number two pencil, you can get, you know, Prismacolor pencils, what, whatever you're comfortable drawing with, uh, that's that's cool. A uh, little explanation about pencils. Uh, pencils have, uh, this one is called an HB pencil. Now HB 
stands for hardness and blackness. So this is a, a mid-range pencil. Uh, and most number two pencils that you'll get, you know, like the little yellow pencils you get, that's that's a mid-range pencil. Um, the harder the lead, the more brittle it is. The blacker the lead, you know, the darker the color you're going to get when you draw. I go with a good mid-range because I erase my pencils. If you're going to leave your pencils, then you're probably better off using a darker lead but that's entirely up to you. Um, pencil is not my medium, so I don't really have much to say in that regard. Um, because I do erase my pencils after I ink, I have a couple of different eraser suggestions for you. I've got the Art Gum, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, it's what I started out with. If you make a lot of mistakes like I do, I would recommend the kneading erasers because you can shape them. Like say you've got his face drawn out, but you only want to erase this little edge over here. I mean, you can shape the the eraser to uh, to get that without destroying the rest of it. Where it's not so easy to do that with the art gun. Uh, maybe you noticed I I hold the card with a forefinger and my thumb. I do that because in the past I have ruined cards by bending them. At the last minute, you know, I'm erasing pencils and. <laughs> and now you've got a bent card. So, my suggestion would be to hold it straight and erase that in that fashion. Uh, either one of these pencils is not really going to screw up your surface. Uh, they're pretty good about not doing that. Uh, you might lose a little bit of surface area if you use anything other than these. Um, but, like I said, these are the only two I use, so I don't know that for sure. Um, as far as inking is concerned, you can pretty much go to Walmart and get, you know, whatever. You want a you want a small nib, you know, a fine nib at least. This is a Sharpie pen, and I actually think it's blue ink. I have some black ones too. Uh, and you want to make sure that they're archival ink. That means that they will not brown and they will not uh, run when you color with them. If you've got a little bit more money to spend, I would go for some some of the more professional brand. I mean, I don't know if you can see on here, it actually says Archival Ink. These are Microns. And this is uh, my predominant pen for inking. Uh, there are several different nib sizes that I use to get different line weights. And if you are strictly into brush drawing, uh, they do make a brush pen. Uh, which is a nylon brush instead of a, an ink nib. Um, so that's a, another alternative. You can get these at just about any art store, Hobby Lobby, Dick Blick, Carpe Diem. Carpe Diem has them cheapest. You can get them at Michael's as well. Um, these are the ones I predominantly use for inking, although I have heard that Copic makes a multi-liner that is also very good. Uh, last on my list, I actually don't think I'm going to cover this last thing on the list. Um, something I will go into next time because it looks like I'm running short on time for these. <clears throat> the next episode I will go into a couple of the alternatives for these things that I've covered. And uh, it will primarily uh, just be a slide presentation with uh, you know my thoughts on what you can do with those things. So until next time, uh, this is C.H. Miles with uh, Sketch Card uh, Artists uh, on DeviantArt. Uh, please check us out on DeviantArt. Uh, have a look at our galleries. Uh, support the artists. Uh, you got any questions, uh, just email me or message me on DeviantArt. Thanks once again. We'll see you next time.